Hi guys, this is the Sony 35mm f1.4 G Master Prime lens. And with advances in Sony technology, this thing is now damn near perfect. So why then am I about to tell a bunch of you that you should get the 35mm f1.8 that is about half the price instead? Well, the price is part of it, but there's more. Let's talk about it. So I have owned the Sony 35mm f1.8 for a couple of years and I have used it a lot and I love this lens, but Sony was kind enough to send over the 35mm G Master for comparison because they knew that I would want to buy it. And of course I do. Now this lens is the reason I say that it is now near perfect is that uh, in the new cameras, the Sony a7 IV, the FX30 that you're looking at right now, and the Sony a7R5, they all have focus breathing compensation in it. And this lens, its big flaw was focus breathing. Here, let me just show you. So here it is mounted on the a7 IV and without focus breathing compensation on, you can see how atrocious that focus breathing is. Very distracting. And I think that is a big problem for video shooters, especially. And now let's turn the focus breathing corrections on. And as you can see, it corrects it. Now the lens can be used for focus pulling. It can be used for doing quick focus so that it's not that distracting breathing that you see. So this is the 35 millimeters with no focus breathing correction on at all because you don't have the ability to focus correct that in the cameras. It is not one of the lenses compatible with focus breathing correction, but that doesn't matter because it does not focus breathe. It is almost completely void of focus breathing. It looks absolutely fantastic and was the main reason that I got this 35 millimeter lens over any other 35 millimeter for Sony. But with this focus breathing compensation that you have on the 35 millimeter, there is a crop, a significant crop that comes in with this that makes it now much less wide than the regular 35 millimeter. I would say it's close to something like a 38 millimeter, almost a 40 millimeter at this point. So let me just show you in the studio the difference between the uh, when the corrections are on and when they're off and the field of view that you get. So this is the 35 millimeter f 1.8 in the studio. This is the field of view. Now let's just switch out the lens and put the focus breathing compensation on the 35 G Master and look at that. That is a significant crop compared to the 35. I actually have to back up my tripod pod if I want to get my cool little tube lights in the back in frame and that is what I do with the 35 millimeter G Master when the focus breathing compensation is on. So again here it is with the focus breathing compensation on then I turn it off on the same G Master lens and it is much wider as you can see but I wouldn't leave it in this mode because it focus breathes too much and that is distracting if I am displaying objects to the camera or if I'm moving around too much in fact. But you see from those video samples especially here in Handsome Studios where I was shooting at f2 for both lenses I mean I could hardly tell the difference between the two footage in fact I couldn't tell the difference between them I had to keep looking up which one was which once you color grade it in s log 3 I mean and this thing is quite sharp as well I mean this is razor sharp but the 35 1.8 is quite sharp plenty sharp so uh, I think this is a great video lens but let's talk about why you might want to choose the 35 millimeter G Master and number one, the 1.4. I mean, it's going to give you a blurrier background if that is what you're looking for. But more importantly, I think it's going to give you two thirds of a stop of light, you know, so that when you're in low light conditions, when it's getting extremely dark, this guy is going to do you better. But uh, we can just go outside. You can see the difference between the 1.4 and the 1.8. So you see right here, I'm actually touching the wall. That's how close the brick wall is to me. And you see how blurry it is with the 1.4. With the 1.8, not as blurry, still blurry, but not as blurry. But there's a lot more to the G Master than just that 1.4. It's like, look at the build quality on this guy right there. The aperture ring, you can click it or de-click it. It's got the button, the focus hole button, the autofocus and manual focus. The 35 1.8 has that as well, but it does not have that aperture ring that can be clicked or de-clicked. And uh, just this thing is built so well. Let me get my a7 IV. Hold on. I mean, look at that. And like me, it's not just pretty. It's also 
functional. I mean, just it feels good. It balances well. When you want to use your focus ring, no problem right there. Everything is easy and to be able to use that aperture ring for photos, quick photos, to be able to change things that fast. I absolutely love using the G Master for photos. When I am using the uh, 35, it's just not as good of an experience. I love an aperture ring, especially one that I can click for photos or de-click for video and having it a little bit bigger too makes it more comfortable to hold. It balances better and it's just a better experience. And I will say both lenses have a linear focus throw. So that's great. You can repeat focus pulls. A lot of times by focus by wire, you know, you're not going to be able to repeat focus pulls, you know, uh, it, depending on if you go too fast or too slow, it changes where the ring will focus. But these guys have a linear focusing system, which is great for both of them. I didn't expect it on the 35 1.8, but there it is. The G Master is also better for bad weather. Uh, they say that the uh, 35 millimeter 1.8 is weather resistance, but you know, I don't see a gasket back there. And uh, I just, I wouldn't trust that in anything more than a light mist, but uh, this G Master, I wouldn't mind using this in bad weather at all. And now let me show you a few tests where the 35 competes, but the G Master does beat it. And uh, look at this one in sharpness here. Here's the CN Tower in Toronto. It is a building that used to be the tallest in the world. Now it's like 50th. I don't know. They just keep making bigger and bigger buildings, trying to humiliate us over here in Toronto. But if you look there at that, I don't know what it is, the, the spare tire, the little ring that is around the needle, it's, uh, it's sharper here on the 35 millimeter G Master. But you know, the 35 1.8 is still sharp. It's just the G Master is crazy sharp. In terms of chromatic aberration, both are quite good. I tried very hard to find good shots with chromatic aberration, but uh, the 35 millimeter G Master is a little tiny bit better once again, but both very good. Same thing with longitudinal. Well, with the longitudinal chromatic aberration, I would say that the G Master is quite a bit better. So uh, when it comes to the loca, which is really hard to remove in post, well, you have the, uh, the G Master is the way to go for that. And here's a big one for the G Master, I think, and that's the quality of the bokeh. The bokeh, if you look at this picture here of this fence, just look at the fall off from what is in focus to what is out of focus. Such a nice, smooth transition, and the out of focus area is very just, it's pleasing. It's just not, it's not busy. It looks really great. The 35 looks pretty good. It just doesn't look quite as good as the G Master once again. And it's not just the 1.4 versus the 1.8. If you put them both at 1.8, the uh, the, bokeh, the bokeh of the G Master still looks superior in my opinion. So I also think skin tones are rendered better on the G Master. Look at our gorgeous model here. He was really expensive to get on set, but uh, here he is and look at that. I think it just looks a little bit better out of the G Master. I like the colors better. I like the contrast. I like the way it makes skin look. So here's the thing, if you're a video shooter or you're even a hybrid shooter and you do not have one of the cameras that has focus breathing compensation like the A7S III still doesn't have that, then I think the 35 millimeter 1.8 is the better way to go. Now, if you do have one of the cameras that has focus breathing compensation and you're a hybrid shooter, sure, the G Master. And listen, if you are a professional photographer, if you are relying on this for professional photos, I think the 35 millimeter G Master is the way to go. It is just a little bit better than the 35 millimeter 1.8 in pretty much every way. And all of that adds up to a lot more than $700 for, you know, people who are shooting professionally, making their living with their lenses. If you want the best optical quality possible, the 35 millimeter G Master is your lens. So now the G Master retails for about $1,400 USD, whereas the uh, 35 1.8, it's about 700 and fifty dollars usually sometimes you can get a hundred bucks off on either one but uh, there you go and the thing is right now i do have the budget for this 35 mil i budget for my lenses my wife she gives me a substantial allowance and i can save it up and pick the lens that i want you know i call it wife privilege am i right please don't unsubscribe to this so i can afford this in my lens budget but i just don't know if i want to upgrade from the 35 millimeter with the way that I shoot. So let me know down below if you like to shoot at 35 millimeter. I certainly do. I like uh, to do street photography and also for video. I know a lot of wedding photographers like to shoot at 35 millimeter. If you do shoot it, tell me which lens you have and why if you chose one of the Sony's or one of the options from the third 
third-party manufacturers. Let us know down below. And uh, thanks for watching us. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.